Hey guys, today we are going to learn how to paint this cool thing here. What? How did you do right, that? Guys, first thing about painting something to look realistic is you have to work with realistic colors and most likely those aren't going to come straight out of the bottle for you. So the very first color I have mixed is yellow and it is toned down with violet. So it's just a little bit of violet in some yellow and that gives it this kind of brownish yellow tone and that's going to be the first color we put in here all right so just wanted to point, show you guys how notice how far laid down my blade is when i cut on a paper like that also i didn't point out before i got into that <clears throat> it's really critical that you keep your backdrop very very clean if you're looking for something white like this which is why we use masking in this case all right, guys, we're going to get that base yellow texture layer in there. I'm going to put it in there with a dryer sheet. Um, obviously, that is a dirt cheap tool. Use it after you put it in the dryer. And I attach mine to embroidery hoops. I uh, do that all the time. Um, it keeps me from them blowing around and getting moved around on my table when I'm working flat like this. And that is so much better. And it keeps them nice and taut for me. I'll drop a link down below in the description. So if you guys want to go to the description, you'll be able to find them. The reason I'm putting these in, these lines in with this color right now is not because I need that coloring there. It is so that I can find the lines later and I don't get lost in my picture. Because the more you get into starting to put detail in, the easier it is to get lost in your picture. Let's get dirty. We're going to add a little bit more violet to that yellow and make a dirty brown tone. I'll put that on the splash screen so you can see. And there's that dirty color that I was talking about right there. And there's the stippling effect that I was talking about. See, I practiced it off of my leaf before I started, you know, spraying it on my leaf. In this particular case, so much texture is going on, it probably wouldn't matter that much. But, you know, it's always good to practice off to the side on a scrap piece of paper or something that it is to start on your picture. Um, make sure that your airbrush is flowing right. You know, I'm, I'm as guilty of as anybody. I'll, I'll paint when my airbrush isn't working just right, knowing I need to clean it or something. But, uh, you know, it is good practice to try to at least, at least practice some of those techniques. And, of course, I, you see that I'm using some paper and I used my freehand shield there so that I could get those lines up there and get some crisp lines in. Mostly I'll freehand my lines in and I much prefer to do that. I really used the paper, torn paper right there and the shield because I wanted you to see, you know, a couple of different ways of getting things. And then of course, once I use that shield in the middle, I blended it out anyway. I wanted that edge a little bit fuzzier than what the shield was gonna give me. All right, guys, so now we're gonna get another airbrush out and we're gonna mix up another color, this orange color. I'll put that on splash screen too. The more airbrushes you use, the better this is gonna turn out. That was absolute total. What did you guys to have to clean more airbrushes like me? So we're gonna come in here now and we are going to take it is red violet and that is mixed with yellow is that color we're making to make a brown and if you stop and think about what that red violet and yellow is basically red yellow and blue very small amounts of blue in that shade so we're using if you were to mix it up in the primaries you would be mixing a lot of yellow um, you know, a bit of red and just a tiny little bit of blue to get that same brownish, orangish brown uh, color. However, the red, violet, and the blue are handy, or the red, violet, and yellow are handy in that, you know, I can mix very small amounts of that, and that's, that's a shortcut from mixing from the primaries. And it's nice because I only have to mix up you know, a few drops of paint to get the colors that I want. Once again, if you're confused about that, how I came to that shortcut is to look at your color wheel. Check out my color theory. If you haven't seen any of my color theory videos, go check them out. And then take a look at your color wheel 
and realize if you draw that line, as I show in my other video, from red violet to yellow, you'll be able to see where that color intersects and creates the color where I'm using now. Once again, guys, I'm going to point out it's easiest to look at these sections individually in the leaf. So look at each segmented section as its own entity and then realize that between the segments, they're going to roll up and then come back. So it's going to tint out from segment to segment towards each other. So your darkest spots are usually going to appear, their valleys are going to exist next to your veining structure and then away from the veining structure in the middle is where the light would catch it the light is coming from the very top in this on this leaf and it's coming down that's why your shadow is going to be appearing on the very bottom edge of the leaf so on your picture now of course you've been laying down but anyway as i was saying from the top of the picture on your screen to the bottom is the way the light is running and it's coming a little bit more overhead, you know, more, you know, midday than that. And of course, obviously, I'm using texture stencils and things like that. I'm just using the edge of it in some cases. Check out the security cam footage. All right, guys, now we're going to leaves originally start green. So we're going to put our green accents in now. Now we're going to add a little bit of green in there because in reality, some of the green of the leaf would still be appearing depending on the age and decomposition of the leaf. So I'm using straight up moss green out of the bottle and because of the fact that I'm using transparent paints, I have full control over how much saturation. So if you do you know, use a color straight out of the bottle, it needs to be a somewhat desaturated color in the first place and you need to be careful with it. Um, and spray very lightly. So I'm just randomly popping in the green here and there where I think it's gonna work out good. I don't I didn't have a specific plan. Um, you know, notice I got a little bit in the middle in places and a little bit on the outer edges and then I thought the very tip edges might uh, benefit from that just a little bit. You know, I also caught my daughter on the security cam, but she kind of threatened my life if I put that on YouTube. So, um, didn't say my family was the smartest, which might be why she wound up being my studio assistant girl right here. But, uh, you know, how it goes. Anyway, guys, we're going to mix up a little bit of dirty orange here. And my dirty girl over here keeps hearing me say that, and she's getting jealous. But we're going to mix up some dirty orange, and let's get to it. And that color right there is a dirty orange, which is uh, orange mixed with a blue violet is actually what it is. And to give that dark color in there. And we're gonna go in here, we're gonna add some stuff here and there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to <clears throat> continue to add violet to this mix to get darker and darker as I need to. You'll see that this will get very dark in a moment. I'm still working with that orangish mix, but it's gonna get darker still by adding a little bit more violet to it. Um, and then the important thing to keep in mind here is that, you know, of course I'm making random shapes in here, which are going to create different, make it appear to be shadowed upper, darker in the spots, which is going to create that wrinkly look. But the important thing to keep in mind is that everything kind of folds back towards your veins and those creases become more prominent and further and deeper into those veining structure of the leaf depending on how late in the season the leaf would be. So in other words, the drier the leaf would be, the more wrinkly it would appear. So, you know, that's just something to keep in mind. If your leaves were wet, they're actually very glossy. You'd have a lot more vibrant colors with um, it. But, you know, with a dried leaf like this, it is pretty, pretty wrinkled up. And so notice that I, you see that dark color I'm using and you see how I toned in and touched up on the edges. Uh, notice I'm just doing a lot of freehand. Those, those motions I'm making there are mainly just a lot of wiggling. And then you'll see me just blend out to create that shade. So the textures, since we're working with transparent paints, the textures don't completely get obliterated by glazing over it like that. It just darkens up that section without killing all the texture you're putting in there. Yeah, notice how lightly and gently I'm spraying in there, and the subtlety of that, subtlety of that, 
uh, that'll create that illusion that you know the there's an undulation in the leaf structure so just keep working it in and obviously I'm putting a lot of color in at the tips um, which is that it's pretty much normal appearance of the tips at the edge of the tips get uh, very very dark uh, if you you know just study a leaf and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about and you know there's really not a whole lot of tricks to making a leaf structure it's just understanding that the leaf structure has that wrinkly effect and it continues to get darker and lighter as it's going up and down and once you get your basic colors there it's really this is a much simpler project than what it first seems and you really can't mess it up too bad because you know all anything does if you put a shadow in a different place it's just going to make it appear like there's a bump right there and doing a little bit of cleanup with a soft eraser on some of that overspray where I didn't want it. And now we're going to mask it and I wanted you guys to see how much difference it looks with just a different color in the background and they get that overspray off. How dramatic that difference is with just light changes in the colors around you, how colors appear differently. And keen viewers may notice that I missed a little piece of the masking here. So, um, yeah, that kind of sucked. Dude, so you're telling me you saw me miss that and you didn't point it out? Thanks a lot, man. I thought we were friends. Contact paper makes great low tack clear masking. And I put this in there to show you guys uh, when you're laying in masking like that, you always start at the top. Don't remove all your backing and then pull it down to cover it up. And that is going to be the easiest way to get bubbles out. Now, of course, if I needed a longer piece, I would have used uh, something to smooth it out. Here I'm using a brownish mix, which is a violet mixed up with yellow and thinned out pretty well so that I don't have to worry about it getting too dark. But remember, your shadow will always be darkest wherever it's formed, which means the closest to the leaf. Remember, there will be no shadow at the top of the leaf because the light is coming from above and coming down. And the longer your shadow is, the farther that the item will appear off of the board that you're working on. So I'm going to come in here with my drop shadow. I could have done this without masking. You'll see me do it here in a second. And then once I pull that masking off, touch up a couple spots, and then I'm going to take that same darker mix and I'm going to go in here and add a few little touch up spots here and there, uh, tone in a little bit of edges, add a little bit of shadow and shading throughout the uh, leaf. If I'd have tossed a little glitter, my wife would still be trying to pick that thing up. One of my viewers, John Payne, asked if I was going to do any Thanksgiving-themed paintings. Uh, he said that him and his family loved the pumpkin and the scarecrow we did for the Halloween theme. Uh, so the next day I got up and I had a little bit of spare time, so I decided to do this leaf, and I thought I'd put a little twist on it, give it that 3D effect, and we'll go over that. We'll turn a tutorial into it. But anyway, guys, that's how you get what you want. You have to ask. I can't promise I always get to the tutorials you want, but I will try. But anyway... Let's get moving, guys. All right, for those of y'all who don't know, my name is Bill Kennedy with W. Leon Artistry. How did I get the name W. Leon Artistry? Well, William Leon is my given name. So I'm W. Leon. Kennedy is my last name. That's such Bill Kennedy. So anyway, I hope you guys got something out of this tutorial today. If you did, please hit the like button. If you enjoy what you're seeing here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. you got to hit that notification bell and turn on notifications from YouTube. Or you won't get any notifications from YouTube that my new videos are out. So, anyway, if you liked the video, once again, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, as I always say, you can always use the down thumb and that one works just fine. But anyway, y'all have a good one. We appreciate you. Bye.